Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Monday, February 13th with your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining me uh, once again. This is day 36 um, of our journey through the Bible. And today we've got Exodus chapters 19 through 21. Uh, a couple um, familiar passages and then getting into the law. <laughs> All the various um, um, regulations for civil life for the Israelites in the wilderness. So um, we begin with uh, them arriving at Mount Sinai and kind of the, the preparation for them to receive the, the details of this covenant that they will be under. And um, in chapter 19, you know, they come to the mountain and, and God warns them, warns Moses to tell the people, like, don't, don't approach the mountain, don't come up to the mountain, um, lest the people die. Um, and uh, kind of going throughout, um, especially chapter 19, but then into 20, um, what we see is that... Um, what, what God is showing us is that nobody is able to approach God without a mediator. Somebody must be a go-between between, um, between them and God. And so God chooses Moses to be that mediator that, um, you know, he allows Moses to come up onto the mountain, but not the people. Um, he allows Moses to draw near to him, but not the people. Now we see, <coughs> excuse me, also that, um, you know, he is descending onto this mountain um, and there's smoke, there's, um, we'll see later, the, it is a devouring fire, um, you know, thunder, lightning. There's this just great tumult happening on the mountain that, that God is kind of hidden in. So even, even when he comes, um, allows Moses to draw near to him on Mount Sinai, uh, God is still kind of obscured behind these things, kind of like he obscured himself uh, behind the burning bush. Um, God will always be... Um, finding some way to mediate his um, his interactions with people to prevent them from from dying because God is holy and we are not. Um, Moses was not holy. He could not be in the presence of God. Um, God uh, would, um, you know, he, he did allow Moses to draw near to him. But even in that, um, there had to be some provision made in order for that to happen. Um, and of course, the uh, the big looking ahead foreshadowing here is that Jesus is is the the one true mediator between us and God. He is the only one who can um, not just mediate between us and God, but but bring us true peace. Um, you know, Moses, as we will see, you know, he he announces a covenant um, that is righteousness according to the law. He announces a covenant based on the law, saying, "Obey these things, and you will live." Um, so he, he can, he provides a, or, or, um, mediates a covenant that we are unable to keep. Um, we, we simply cannot do it. The people of Israel simply could not do it. We can't do it. Um, so when Jesus comes, he, he brings a new covenant, you know, he, a better covenant that is not based on us, but on him. And so what, when the covenant that he mediates is, is the perfect one that is, his death and resurrection, and so now we can approach God through him. See, right now, currently, on this side of uh, the, the resurrection, you know, we still can't approach God. We need to approach him through Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. So that's what's going on chapter uh, 19. 20, we get the Ten Commandments, so very familiar. Um, and uh, it, it's actually interesting because in, in chapter 19, when, when Moses says, like, okay, here's the covenant that God is going to make with you guys. And the people are, are like, yes, great. They say all, all the things that you, that uh, the Lord, all the Lord has spoken, we will do. You know, sure, this covenant sounds great. We'll do it all. Then Moses goes up on the mountain and, and God gives him the Ten Commandments. And Moses comes down to tell them uh, what, what God has said. And now 
now their their tune has changed a little bit, and they're they're afraid because of you know the lightning, the thunder, this great chaos going on. You know that God's presence is mighty and terrifying, and they even see it from afar. They're not even up on the mountain; they're they're seeing it from afar, and it terrifies them. So that when they hear God's word even spoken to them, um, or they can you know they hear the thunder, they're they're afraid, and so they say that they say to Moses like, okay, you know what? You talk to us. You talk to God. <laughs> And then you tell us what he said, because we do not want to hear from God directly. In fact, they say, um, uh, do not let God speak to us lest we die. So, so terrifying is his presence that they don't even, they, they can't even receive his direct word, except through mediation, um, which also points ahead to Christ being the better mediator because he is the word. So he is the direct word of God that comes to us that we can actually receive, that we can um, hear um, embrace, receive all this good stuff. So we see all of this kind of happening and pointing ahead to Christ in all this. Um, the cool thing about the commandments is that, um, you know, the, they're kind of the basic overview of, of all of our, you know, interactions, the, the core of God's law, right? And when, when his law hits sinful human beings, it can only condemn us, you know, at, at first, you know, we, we can talk later about the third use of the law, that it, when we are uh, Christians, when we're brought into the faith, uh, the law now has a, a different use. It doesn't just convict us or condemn us. It, um, it also guides us. But um, as a sinner faces a law, they stand condemned before it. But if you look in the text, what you'll notice is the first thing God says when he's giving the Ten Commandments is, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of, this, out of slavery. So he prefaces the whole giving of the law by saying, this is who I am, and this is how I have redeemed you. This is what I have done to save you. So even in providing the law that does convict us and condemn us in our sinfulness, um, he, he, he brings it to us by saying, and, and I have redeemed you, and I have saved you. Um, again, kind of looking ahead to when he will send his son who will redeem us from the, the, um, the condemnation of the law. All right, so that's normal stuff as you read it, um, listen to it, whatever. Uh, it'll probably be very familiar. The, the, the last part of chapter 20 and then in all of chapter 21 is when we get into the detailing of the various regulations. Um, and in these chapters, we get uh, regulations on altars, building altars and, and the use of them, um, the practice of, of dealing with slaves, uh, the practice, uh, some of the practices of um, marriage and dealing with, um, with your, your, your wife, um, laws about, um, about murder, about assault, about, um, uh, restitution when thing, when like your oxen gores somebody and there's an accident, whatever. And he lays out all these things that are, um, setting precedents for the people of Israel's court system, essentially, you know, okay. As you lit, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> as you live, and go through these things. Um, this is the way you, you'll you'll handle them. And as you as you read it, as you listen to it, um, you know, especially from from where we sit, you know, a lot of these things are are make us cringe quite a bit. You know, especially laws about slaves and how they're treated, and um, you know, especially how we deal with with um, you know, treating daughters as you know quasi property, and um, it's just, you know, and even you know, recognizing polygamy. Now, um, what you'll notice in here is that at no point does God say, and polygamy is good. You know, having multiple wives is good. He doesn't say that. He just regulates the practice, recognizes that it happens <laughs> amongst them and regulates it. And what we have to kind of see past our initial cringe factor of it, um, because all of these things or a good ch chunk of what you're going to read in chapter 21 I mean, it is like, ooh, this is this does not sound good <laughs> um, to our um, to you know. It's just it's it's bad. <laughs> it sounds really bad to us. But you got to go back into that situation, into that context, and understand that what he's doing with this, you know, the the way that the the people of Israel are, you know, were accustomed to their laws, the Egyptian laws, the Mesopotamian laws, all of that what they patterned all of their laws after. Um, what you need to kind of pick through in what God is saying here 
is he setting up, he's kind of working within those systems that they, that's already established among them, but setting up specific um, regulations about them, establishing rights and um, uh, um, protections for slaves in certain situations, for women in a lot of situations. Um, and even though a lot of this does kind of hit us in a very like, oh, these are, these are really bad things. What you got to see through that is that he's actually setting apart the laws for back then in terms of providing some pretty amazing rights that other societies did not have, other cultures did not provide. Um, so he's kind of building this into it. And what we'll see, you know, it, it, as we go through, I mean, it, it's some of these things can be can be kind of a rough go because it just offends our sensibilities and rightly so. Right. But we're talking about these people living back in that time and what their lives were. Um, you know, as we get into the New Testament and the Gospels, you know, and we just had um, yesterday in, in uh, the in Matthew chapter five where Jesus kind of um, talks about like, hey, you, you've heard it said that these, this is how you understand the law. You know, and this is how your, your forefathers have, have framed it for you and have established it and said, this is what it means. And Jesus says, look, the, what it truly means, because I, 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 I am, I wrote this law. <laughs> He's, he, he shows that it's like, no, no, no. It, it's not like it, 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 you've heard it said that, that you shall like um, write a certificate of divorce. Well, he, he talks about that, but says, you know, we're talking about adultery here. Okay, divorce is not good. So, you know, you're focusing on you need to write a certificate of divorce to follow the law. I tell you that, you know, when you engage in divorce, it, it is it involves adultery. You know, you're, you're committing sin against your spouse. So he's getting back to the core of it and um, kind of, in a way, unraveling it for us to say that there, there's just, um, you know, we need to get back to looking at the law and say, no, this, this involves loving our neighbor. And that, um, you know, this, this kind of civil law that God gave to the people of Israel in the wilderness was for them at that time. Um, you know, certainly is not, this law does not bear on us whatsoever. Um, you know, that, that was part of a covenant that we are not under. So, um, you know, it's not something that we, we point to and say, Oh, see, this is, we have to hold to that. It's like this, that was, <laughs> that was for them. That was for in the time in the wilderness. This is what they, um, you know, to set them apart amongst the people that they were traveling around um, and to provide protections, actually extra protections for people within that system. So um, it's, it's rough. <laughs> it is. Um, but through it, you need to be able to see that God is working within, <laughs> within these people to say, look, and you shall look past what common law is saying and say, no, we need to protect we need to set aside. <laughs> we need to honor and, and, and provide for. And actually, that is what is going on um, in here. So, uh, yeah. So let me know. I mean, it, it can be a rough read. So uh, please, by all means, uh, reach out. Let me know in, in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts. Um, or you can shoot me an email or text or something and, and we'll, we'll talk. But uh, kind of a fun group of readings that we're getting into now. All right, well, let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in my life and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, blessings to you on the beginning of this new week. I uh, hope you have a great Monday, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.